If you hadn't experienced existential anxiety before 2020, you probably have had it to some degree since 2020. That's what I'm talking about today. I'm Dr. Tracy Marks, a psychiatrist, and I make mental health education videos. There's no question that the last two years of the pandemic have increased the incidence of mental health problems. That is, more people than before have experienced mental health issues like depression, anxiety, addiction, and burnout. It may seem obvious that we'd all be negatively impacted because we've been through a lot of stuff, but I think that one of the reasons the pandemic has created a mental health crisis is because it's activated existential anxiety in people who may not have had it otherwise. What is existential anxiety? Existentialism is a philosophy that teaches that life doesn't have inherent meaning, we assign it meaning. Existentialism teaches that each person is responsible for their life choices and outcomes. Our freedom allows us to assume this responsibility and has two components, agency and will. Will is the decision to be free. Agency is the action you take to exercise that will. Modern theorists came along and further developed the existentialism concept by identifying four basic human fears, death, freedom, existential isolation, and meaninglessness. If you think about what we've experienced in the past two years, pandemic precautions, political unrest, social injustice and division, and now war, the past two years have touched on all of these fears. Under normal circumstances, you might only occasionally think of these fears, or specific events could trigger you to worry more intensely about them. Here are some examples of life transitions that commonly trigger existential fears. Graduating college and starting a career, which signals the end of your safety net. This represents unwanted freedom. Getting married and questioning the permanency of your choice. This represents a loss of freedom or fear of isolation. Watching your parents die and realizing that you're the next wave. This represents a fear of death ending a long-term relationship and worrying that you won't find another partner. This represents fear of isolation. In selling a business, you spent 20 years building with the plan to relax and enjoy your money. This can trigger a fear of a meaningless existence. In these situations, you can experience anxiety or worry that reaches crisis proportions, or these situations can simply prompt you to think about your life and motivate you to make some life changes. So sometimes existential crises can produce self-improvement because they prompt you to self-reflect and make different life decisions. When you struggle with existential anxiety, you may use other activities as coping mechanisms. Dr. Aaron Keshen wrote a 2006 paper on existential therapy and identified these activities as purpose substitutes. They're things that you do to reduce your anxiety. And here are some of the common compensatory behaviors or purpose substitutes. Overindulging in substances like alcohol or pills, excessive shopping, forming unfulfilling relationships, zealously supporting a cause, excessively focusing on acquiring money, material items, or power, excessive media use like television, movie streaming, or social media, excessively working, you can use these activities to compensate for a lack of purpose, but they're not adaptive or meaningful. If you recognize that you're doing some of these activities, think about what they represent for you or what void they fill. Taking notice of these activities can help you identify areas in your life that you wish to improve. Finding purpose and value can remedy all types of existential anxiety. Values determine what you intend for your life and they shape your decisions. Time is a fixed asset and we all get the same amount of it. Existentialist philosophy teaches that life is made up of irreversible, irretrievable time segments. Feeling like you wasted your time doing something you don't enjoy or that your best days are behind you can breed a lot of regret and deep regret can lead to anxiety and depression. I talk in a previous video about how to do some introspection to determine your values and what matters most to you. I'll have that video linked to this one, 
But here are a few common domains that people find most of their value and spend most of their time. Different kinds of relationships like romantic, family, and friendships, career or work, education or personal growth, recreation or leisure. One last thing that I wanna mention is, what if your thing is death anxiety? How do you get rid of it or manage it? Even though death is inevitable, meaning and value are powerful buffers against death anxiety. You can reduce death anxiety by aligning yourself with a worldview that shares your values. An example would be connecting with a religious or spiritual group, or even taking up a cause. For example, suppose you assume the cause of reducing global warming by doing your part to eliminate using things that are damaging to the environment. You may decide to stop using plastic and to consistently recycle, even though it's easier to throw everything in the trash. Even though that's a small scale effort on your part, identifying with the cause connects you to a movement that is larger than you and lives on beyond you. When you believe in a higher power or attach yourself to a movement, you gain relative immortality through your beliefs living on past your experience. That's one perspective you can adopt to lessen the fear of dying and having everything you stand for stop. Take a look at this video on identifying and establishing meaning and value in your life. Thanks for watching. See you next time.